Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today I am going to make this really cute bow clutch. Now, we're going to be able to make this with any fabric, and we are going to be able to use a wire frame. And using a wire frame will turn any fabric into a very polished professional look. And there are many different fabrics we can use. We could use velvets and silks and denims. And we can use really fun, funky fabric. So I've decided to make this with a striped and a polka dot. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this little clutch is about seven inches by four and a half inches, and it's about two and a half inches deep. So it's a great size for a little clutch or even a makeup bag. Or if we want to store some sewing notions, this would be fun. And think of all the different fabrics we could use for this. This does come as a kit, so it does come with the wire frame, the directions, the pattern pieces, and this little rope that we're going to need to attach this. And you can get different color frames. You can also buy just the hardware, so if you want to make more than one, you can. And of course, we can always buy chains to go with it. This little piece of hardware does have these little clips built in so that we can put those chains on. And if you don't want them, they'll just fold inside the bag. These frames are glued right into the fabric. So I would recommend a strong glue, something like this E6000. We're also going to need a stiletto or a toothpick so that we can just make sure the fabric is inside those channels. And then, of course, our fabric. I would recommend using some lightweight to a medium weight interfacing. And this one is a fusible one. So I will be making the bow out of the striped fabric, the body out of the polka dot, and inside I am going to do the lining with something really fun. I'll be able to take these pattern pieces and now cut them out. Once I've cut them out, I'm going to make a few little notes. What I want to do is remind myself where the fold of the fabric is going to be. I like to put these little arrows and I need that on that purse front, a pocket, and for the bow I was supposed to have the fold down the center but I just cut out two pieces and glued them together so there'll be no fold needed. Before I cut out the fabric I do like to interface my fabric. So I'll take my interfacing and stick it to my fabric before I cut it out. Now that these pieces are stuck together, I can draw around my pattern pieces and cut them out. I will need two pieces of this bag shape, one for the front and one for the lining. I will need four gussets, two for the bag front, and two for the lining, pocket, bows, inside pocket, and that big bow. And everything has the fusible interfacing already on. The first thing we're going to make is this bow. Match right sides together, and using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch right along this top edge. We need to open up this seam flat. Now if you have a pressing bar, you can put that pressing bar inside and then iron along this bar. By doing that, you're not going to press these sides. If you don't have a pressing bar, a handle from an old broom works quite well. And you can see by pressing on top of something, we did not press any of those sides. Turn this right side out and that center seam is going to hit the center. And you're going to even be able to see because those sides will match up. We can now press that and with that seam flat it gives a nice flat finish. We now are going to work on that little knot. We need to put right sides together and stitch down a quarter inch and press open. But before we do that, one additional step that's not included in the directions is just fold over quarter inch. 
and with that little quarter inch folded over, now stitch that quarter inch seam allowance. We do want to press that long quarter inch seam allowance open, but it's a little small to get much in there, but we can use a pencil. So put the pencil in there and just press right on top of the pencil so that stays open. By using that little pencil, we have no press marks. And turn this right side out. And now we can press it flat. This little piece is going to be the knot for the bow. If you want, you can run a line of thread to gather that in, or just gather it in with your hands. And we're trying not to wrinkle those outsides. This little piece is going to get wrapped around towards the back. We can now stitch that together. That piece that had that quarter inch over, we can just place it on top and whip stitch that edge closed. Once that back has been stitched, we can adjust that front of the bow so that it looks nice. And that bow is now ready to go on the front of the bag. We can put that aside because we're going to work on that back pocket. I've chosen this black polka dot as my back pocket. This bottom, we're going to press up a quarter inch. The top piece, we're going to press down a quarter inch and then press down one more quarter inch. I'm going to add one additional thing to this back pocket. This is not the directions, but it's just another way of doing these pockets. What I want to do is cut a piece of fabric, the same measurement, but subtracting that half inch and quarter inch. So it's the same width. I'm just missing that top and bottom piece. I'm going to be able to take that shorter piece, line it up, press that bottom right up to that edge, that top, go down a quarter inch, and then go a quarter inch one more time. So this piece is going to fit in between. Do a row of top stitch right along that top edge. We now are going to be able to put the bow and the pocket on that bag. And we're going to put it on the bag front. Use the template or the pattern piece as a guide. We can put pins as markers to where the bow is going to go. So the bow will go on one side, flip it over, and we do have the markings for this pocket placement. So that pocket, the piece with that folded stitch down edge, is going to go closer to the top. I've lined it up. Now I can just replace those pins since they're already there. Pin that pocket down. And on that bow, you're going to find one end is a little bit longer than the other. So this area is longer than the top. So the longer end is going to go to the bottom and the shorter end up at the top. Line those up and replace the pins. So we have the bow on one side and the pocket on the other. We want to anchor that bow down, anchor that pocket down, and then stitch along that bottom seam. So the short one is going to stay open. The bag's going to come like this, so this is going to be that top pocket. Once everything is anchored on, the directions do have us stitch down this bow. I'm going to not stitch the bow down because I might want to carry the purse with my hand under this bow. So if I decide after to stitch it down, I'm going to be able to do it then. The front of the bag is now done. We get to work on the lining. We have that pocket, fold it in half, stitch an L, and then stitch another L. So you leave a little opening here. Through that little opening, we can now turn it right side out. Tuck that seam allowance in, press it flat, and do a row of top stitching right along that folded edge. We now can put that little pocket on the inside of the bag. We need to stitch on three sides, leaving the opening where that small end is going to be. In order to make the lining and the front done, we need to add those side gussets. We need to cut out little squares in the corner. They need to be a quarter inch. 
draw a quarter inch down and do that to the bottom and the sides so we have those quarter inch corners cut out that quarter inch once you've done the one you can use that as a template and do all four corners these little ends are going to be stitched inside find the middle of it and put a little mark do that to both sides and keep that mark within that quarter inch seam allowance find the center of that little gusset and put a mark now match up those marks right sides together and pin and stitch from this one area that we cut out to the other so we're going to stitch from corner to corner right along here so here's that row of stitching I did back stitch here stitch over and back stitch right there and take your stitches and make them a little bit smaller about a size two now duplicate this little cut right here in that fabric so we're just going up to that stitching line we're making a cut we're going to do that to both sides this little cut is going to work as a hinge so now when we go to fold and match those sides together they're going to want to lay flat because of this little hinge match up those seams and stitch this seam back stitch in this corner go up and back stitch here and do a quarter inch and we can do this on both sides so we've started and stopped right here in these stitches back stitched and back stitched it is important that you do not leave any gaps here so you're coming and stitching right off and stitching right off so those threads are going to match up so we have that inside done and it's important that we do check those corners to make sure that we did not have a hole now that that lining is done I need to do the same thing to the outside bag if you're able to get inside and press those seams open it will give it a really nice finish you can put a towel inside you can also use that piece of wood and press the best you can for those seams going out if you finger press them first sometimes it's easier once you get to that iron take the outside of the bag and turn it right side and place it inside the lining what we want to do is match up the side seams and that top back stitch stitch down up all the way around back down into that V stopping here so we're going to have a little area here that's going to be left open so I have a little opening and I've gone all the way around this area needs to be snipped we need to snip right to that point do not cut the threads just snip to that point and then do a few snips along this edge and I'm also going to trim off those dog ears so both sides are going to look like that clean up any threads now we can turn this right side out through that opening tuck in that seam allowance press so all of the edges are together and then do a row of top stitch all the way around that's going to close up that opening and keep all of the edges together flat the bag is ready to have that metal closure on it the glue that I'm having does have a small point so I'm going to be able to put some glue right in the inside make sure your clip is going the right way you can always pin this out of the way now slide this in line it up to where it's supposed to go and then with your stiletto you can just pick that up and put it right inside so I'm going to push that fabric right up to the top I'm going to work all the way around just pushing that all in to the inside you can work from both sides 
when it's all inside, I'm going to tighten it by putting in this little rope. So just line that rope up and stick it right up inside. You just want to get that in there so that you don't see it and it tightens that area. When the top is done, I'm going to add the sides. If you don't have a stiletto, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to put everything in. Once you have it in, any of that glue is going to rub right off. Once we have this the way we like it, I would recommend to let it dry for a couple hours. The last thing we need to do is work on the second side and pull out all the work that we did on the first side. So once we know it is all right, just let it dry. When that one side is good and dried, then let's do that second. When both of those edges have been put on and the glue is dry, you can always take a pair of pliers, fold the fabric back, wrap it with a piece of cloth, a little piece of batting, and you can just squeeze that wire closed. So it's a little bit tighter right here at the end. And that way when it closes up, it just has a little bit more support in that area. So we have the bag done. It has a beautiful pocket in the inside, a pocket on the outside, and a nice big bow on the other side. Now you can stitch that down if you'd like, but if you like to carry a bag as a clutch, you might want to leave it open. And of course, we can always add a chain. You can get different size chains, but this one is a 20 inch chain. And now I have a little crossover bag. If I don't want to use the chain, I could just tuck it inside and carry it as a clutch. It definitely makes a really cute crossover bag. I'll probably be making another one of these to match a New Year's Eve outfit. The only thing is I haven't figured out what I'm making for New Year's Eve yet but this would definitely make a cute bag to match an outfit. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're going to make next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.